And so very quickly within three months, I went from being this normal, healthy 11 year old to completely unresponsive, unable to walk, talk, move, function, and pretty much written off as a lost cause by doctors. Doctors told my parents I wasn't going to make it. And if I did make it, the Victoria they once knew was never coming back because this was, you know, this was a death sentence ultimately. What they didn't realize, what the doctors didn't realize is that I was completely aware the entire time. So I was locked in so I could hear and see things, but no one knew that I could. I could hear the things I didn't want to hear. I could understand what was going on. I was completely mentally intact, just nobody knew that I was. So she just asked me a question. She was like, if you can hear me, can you blink twice? And I didn't just blink twice, I just kept blinking. I was just like, like, yes, I'm, I'm here. And that was kind of the start of, of my very slow journey, you know, back to life. So first of all, thank you very much for coming to join us on the show. We, we have people that have incredible stories, but none with a story quite like yours. And whilst I have watched as much content as I can of yours on YouTube, there's going to be people and, and other sources as well. That Goldcast stuff's a really good, good uh, video clip, I think, that I've seen that people, <laughs> people have seen. Um, I don't think, it, I, first of all, I, I, I didn't, it's almost unbelievable, your story. It's, it's almost unbelievable. It's almost like that can't have happened. But for the people out there that really don't know, Victoria, um, what happened to you, why don't you just tell us in your own words? Sure. Uh, first off, thank you for having me. Um, so when I was 11, I developed two incredibly rare neurological conditions called transverse myelitis and acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, which is a bit of a mouthful. Um, but basically, those are autoimmune conditions that basically your body attacks itself. And so you don't normally get both. So my eye was the lovely, uh, a lovely recipient of the incredibly rare scenario, but basically my brain and spine uh, were attacked. And so very quickly within three months, I went from being this normal, healthy 11 year old to completely unresponsive, unable to walk, talk, move, function, and pretty much written off as a lost cause by doctors. Doctors told my parents, you know, I wasn't going to make it. And if I did make it, the Victoria they once knew was never coming back and that, you know, they should put me away in a special care facility and move on with their lives because this was, you know, this was a death sentence ultimately. And um, what they didn't realize what the doctors didn't realize is, uh, or my family is that I was completely aware the entire time. So I was locked in so I could hear and see things, but no one knew that I could, I could hear the things I didn't want to hear. I could understand what was going on. I was completely mentally intact. Just nobody knew that I was. Now I come from uh, an incredible family. I'm a triplet. So my parents are not one to shy away from a challenge. And so, they were like, we're not, we're not giving up on our, on our child. And so they basically, when, when things stabilized, set up a hospital room in our living room and took care of me. And they, you know, didn't know if I had tomorrow, didn't know, you know, the, the prognosis was pretty grim, but they, in their words were like, well, she's still here and she's still our daughter and we're going to treat, treat her just like, like everyone else. And so um, my parents, my three brothers took care of me. And so for four years, you know, I'm, I'm locked in and, and there was, you know, a couple close calls and there was a lot of lower than low, like below rock bottom type moments. And, um, you know, I, th I think for me, it was, I was pretty, I was pretty good mentally for it because I, I feel like I really early on wanted to shift my perspective to gratitude. And so every day I would start my day with, okay, what are what are five things I'm grateful for today? And just the fact that I woke up and that I'm alive still is a big old thing for the for the gratitude list. And so I I kind of uh, I kind of just made a plan of when I come out of this, what do I want to do? And so I made a very hefty bucket list and and kind of just shifted my perspective instead of focusing, you know, obviously I wrote my eulogy in my head because I, I had to be realistic about it, but I also wrote a bucket list. So I had, you know, my eulogy in the, in the, on the back burner, but I really was like, when I get out of this, cause I am going to get out of this. I do want to go out and get out of this. This is not how my story ends. My story does not end in defeat. I refuse to, to go down without a fight. And so really just believed that, that something great could happen and that I could really have you know, that miracle. And I remember um, there was a really uh, a moment where I did think it was kind of the end. And I, I actually made a promise to God. And I was kind of like, all right, God, if you can hear me, 
hey, it's Victoria. No one else can hear me. Um, but if you, you know, if you really give me a second chance, if you, if you help me get through this night and help me get back to my family and not just get back kind of like where I am now, but really get back, really get my voice back, get my life back. I promise you, I will use my voice for good and I will not waste a single moment for the second chance, but I need this second chance. And I, I promise you, I will not let you down. I will, I will use my voice to change the world and, and be a voice for other people in this situation. And so I kid you not, about a week later, I got control of my eyes back and I was able to blink and and communicate. And so my mom, she walked in and, and mind you, they were fixed and glazed over, but I've always been told I have these big brown eyes since I was a little baby. I had this big head and these big eyes. And, um, and she walked in and I was staring at her and I was following her across the room. She kind of turned around and, and she could see I was focused on her. And so she walked towards me and, and we're having this like moment, if you will. And she's kind of realizing, okay, like she, as she said, she's like, I saw that, that spark back in your eyes that we hadn't seen. And she's like, and so she just asked me a question. She was like, if you can hear me, can you blink twice? And I didn't just blink twice. I just kept blinking. I was just like, like, yes, I'm, I'm here. And so that was kind of the start of, of my very, uh, very slow journey, you know, back to life. And that was really the, that moment, you know, and undoubtedly my greatest accomplishment I'd say is being able to get that blink. And I didn't know how much time I would have this blink for, but it was really a moment that, that changed everything. And sometimes all it is is a blink that, that really ignites something. And so that was kind of our miracle. And, and from there, you know, I learned how to, to talk again, to eat again, to function, um, but I faced, you know, a life in a wheelchair. And so as much as I was back and I was, you know, getting back into life, if you will, I had to navigate the world in a wheelchair. And that was fine with me. You know, I was, um, I went back to school, I got into swimming, I, I really, you know, I really kind of found my, my groove, if you will, and, and found this new normal and this new way of ma in basically making up four years and however long I needed to. And so, um, and so I just kind of became determined and it wasn't, it really wasn't until about three years, you know, in 20, 2013 that I really kind of started to get that itch to be like, well, what, it, what, like, this is the one thing I haven't gotten back yet. You know, my, I was obviously paralyzed from the waist down and I was like, this is the one thing I haven't, you know, gotten back yet out of everything else, you know, I'm talking, I'm eating, I'm functioning, I'm, I'm living independently, I'm, and I'm going to school. And, and uh, I was like, but that's that one, that's the one final piece. And so um, I was like, I just need a blink. I need another blink moment. And every doctor, mind you, just like when I was really sick, we're like, you're never, you're, it's impossible. It's never going to happen. Like, just move on. Like, just get over, like, get over this pipe dream and be realistic about it. And, you know, my parents, you know, would come to appointments and they're like, don't mortgage your house going after this impossible thing. Like, seriously, it's not, it's not going to happen. And, uh, and I, I respectfully heard what they said, but it didn't necessarily mean that I accepted what they were saying. And so we, um, you know, my family, we were just kind of went on a mission and we discovered this paralysis recovery center in California. And basically, uh, realized this was the answer, but I'm from the East coast in New Hampshire. So we couldn't, you know, obviously commute out to LA or out to California all the time. And so my parents kind of made this decision where they're like, why don't we open our own center? Why don't we create our own facility to help other people, to help other families? Because we were very alone. When I was really sick, they were basically like, you're, you're, you know, here's a hospital bed and, you know, hopefully she makes it through. And so we didn't have that support and we really were given this miracle, if you will, that, that when you're given a miracle, it's, it's kind of your job to be someone else's miracle. I feel like there is this like, you know, it, it's like there's a saying where it's like you're blessed so be a blessing to others. And so my family was like, why don't we, you know, open up our own facility that we can help other people just like Victoria and other families heal, but also Victoria will get the support. And they thought about what the doctor said and saying, well, don't mortgage the house. Well, they mortgaged the house and basically opened up a, you know, now world renowned paralysis recovery center. And so from there, uh, Project Walk Boston became kind of my second home. And at this point, 
you know, I was, I had gotten pulled into television. So I was working for ESPN and I would go, you know, I'd work at ESPN, then I'd go to Project Walk. And I really kind of found this, you know, this rhythm and there was nothing going on in my legs, literally nothing. And at this point it was almost, you know, a decade at, of being paralyzed. And then um, we discovered a flicker in my right hip flexor. It was just a muscle twitch. And it was kind of that blink, if you will, like back in, you know, 2010. And so my trainers were kind of like, well, let's fan this flame. Like, let's go after this. And so I kind of just went for it. It was six hours a day, seven days a week. And not long after that flicker, I started, you know, standing on my own, taking a step, taking a few steps and almost 10 years to the day, um, started walking. So that's kind of my Cliff Notes version of all the, all the key components. If you enjoyed this episode, then click over there where you'll be able to see more episodes of the show. But please, can you do me a favor? Click over here. That's where I prefer you to go. The team and I put so much hard work finding guests, telling their stories, sharing their stories. And we'd love very much for you to subscribe, press the bell button and get all of the episodes coming to you thick and fast as soon as we produce them.